Okay, for DIY project number 11, I did the um, Dupfer A124 Wasp self-oscillation mod. Now I had this filter and it's a really cool filter. Um, does some really cool stuff. But you can read about it online. There's people that have figured out a way to make it self-oscillate. Because on its own, it's crazy and unpredictable and does some cool stuff. But it does not self-oscillate. Uh, so you can't ever use it as an oscillator. It has to have a sound source. Uh, so various people figured out how to do this. Um, but the problem is you have to modify the filter to where it doesn't sound like the original Wasp anymore. So um, I was like, man, I, I think I should put a switch in there where I can switch the self-oscillation on and off. However, uh, I looked around and, and uh, Patch Pierre, many of you have heard of Patch Pierre, he tried it and uh, he said he could not get the switch on the board. And so I was like, well, I'll try it anyway. So I took and I made a panel and uh, out of a uh, uh, artboard and tried to do the same thing. And it, 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 he's right, it doesn't work. There's nowhere to fit. Maybe you could find a really small switch, like one of these on these two HP modules, maybe like something like that you get to fit. But you simply can't get a switch to fit in there. So um, anywhere, <coughs> anywhere else on the panel. So I thought, you know what, it has two CV jacks and this one is the unattenuated CV and this is the attenuated CV, but they both do the same thing. So why don't I just take that jack out? So that's exactly what I did. I desoldered that jack and then I tested the, the module to make sure it all still worked. And then I put a switch in there. And then, I don't know if you can see that well, but I just put a little switch where the jack was. Um, and I ran, the, basically there's a resistor right here that's the feedback resistor. And so what you can do is you can take that resistor out and replace it with a higher value, or some people have done is just solder the resistor on the back, a second resistor, to add that into the circuit. So what I did is I just put a switch in there. So in the down position, it's still the original WASP, and in the up position, it engages the self-oscillation mod. So I don't have it uh, screwed in right now because I'm just testing it, but let's take a look at how this works. And you can hear, wow, it's doing its thing. So if we sweep this, we hear the wasp doing its thing. And one of the cool things about the wasp is if you turn the input level down a little bit, you get in the resonance down, you get a really nice clean filter. I mean, it just really sounds pretty good. Now, if you turn the level up a bit, you get an overdrive and it really starts to break up. And then you add resonance to that it just really becomes this crazy kind of unstable um, filter. But what we notice, if we turn the resonance all the way up, we'll turn that volume down just a bit, and we unplug this, there's no self-oscillation. It does not self-oscillate. So once we did the mod, it does self-oscillate. Look at that. So now, we can get it to do all kinds of crazy stuff, right? But it still works good with audio as well. So you can get it to do, here we'll take some of that resonance out. And let's try adding CV in here. unpredictable sounds out of this thing. It's very unstable in a cool way. But now if you want to go back to the regular wasp, now you're back in that classic wasp buzzy thing. And you can also, we'll try the band pass. There we get really clicky. back up to unstable mode. Now one thing you'll notice, even though this is amazing, if we go back to low pass mode, and let's take the CV out, even though we've created something new, we've lost that classic wasp character. There it is. 
So it's nice that we can go back to that. And get that back, because this is not the same. Even though it's cool, it's just not the same. So best of both worlds, traditional wasp, crazy unstable wasp. 